Hey, YouTube. Well, I have a special guest. You ready? Hi. 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 This is my Jimmy dog. Say hello to the camera, boy. Look over there. Look over there. You see my baby eyes so crooked? Well, I thought I'd come maybe out this... People, I'm having the hardest time. Now, you animal lovers will understand this. I told you guys last week I was thinking it was time for Jimmy to be put down because he's, he still can't hear him. Stay right here, baby. Not so bad right now because he has clarity in him, but it only comes down to a phone call. The vet said, bring him down whenever you want. We'll do what has to be done. But I just, I can't do it. I cannot do it. My dog. You know, one day he has a bad day. The next day he has a good day. Right when I think, uh, okay, I've, I've got to make this decision. You know, he's 14 years old. He's, he's got to be put down because he, 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 this uh, tumor is inside of his nose. It's not going away. I tried to treat him with uh, uh, his teeth pulled. Then uh, tooth root was in there. And then he had abscess. And... and uh, been on antibiotics for over a month and everything. I said, okay, I've got to do what's got to be done. But I've never done it before. I've never, never made a decision over whether my pet should live or die. We've gotten so close over these last few years. I don't know what to do. I never thought, I knew it. Well, I kind of suspected it would be this hard, but I mean, it is hard. When he looks at me, my dog comes and looks at me. You know, a dog, they can't talk, so they come and they just look at you until you figure out what, what they want, what, what was wrong. Is, do I want food? Do I want to go to the bathroom? Do I want a doggy treat? You hear that noise? Do I don't want a doggy treat? He just looks at me. And sometimes and, uh, then sometime when I look at him, he'll throw that head up. I'm about to rub him there. And I look at him, and I, it's like he's depending on me. How can I do that to him when he's depending on me? You know, and he still he still eats. He eats me out of house and home with the dog he treats. I didn't put him on the good side. That's the bad side. See, he looks like a different dog on this side. Here's his regular face. The other side is is, is warped because of uh, their growth. But anyway, he looks at me with those puppy dog eyes, almost like he senses that that something's not right. One time, when I the first time I decided to put him down is when he had an abscess in his mouth and he had all his teeth had to be. Had to be pulled. I didn't know they were going to pull him. I thought I was going to take him to put him down. And right before we got to the for the animal hospital, which he's went to freely before, he wouldn't go in. He started pulling at the leash, and he wouldn't go into the hospital. Like he sensed that something was not right. So I don't know how to handle it. Bless his little heart. And see, when he's making that snorkeling noise, you say, okay, it's got to be done. But then the snorkeling noise will stop for, for a couple of hours, you know. But basically, I think it's because I'm, I'm doping him with this Claritin and Benadryl. So that calms him down. I guess it slows everything down. But he sleep. All he can do is sleep. Then. So this is a very difficult thing. I love my little dog. I love my Jimmy. Look at the camera, baby. I figure, well, let's get you on film, my sweetheart. See that face? Look in there, Jimmy. We no, Daddy. Daddy, what are you doing to me, Daddy? You hold me up. Put me back down. He don't like to be held up. It hurts his back. Oh, this is so hard. I don't know how to make this decision or what to do. I don't think I can even be in the room when they did it. I guess they, they would just give him some kind of, they would just put him to sleep. He'd drift off to sleep, but this is just weird. I mean, it's, it's, it's so hard to let him go. And even though I know that it's, it's something that has to happen, it's, it's something that is in nature. Dogs only live a certain amount of time. You know, uh, I see people out there where their dogs are blind and they're in wheelchairs and they're in... I understand. It's hard. It's hard to let go. But um, if he just stayed sick all the time, I, it wouldn't be so difficult. But the hard part about it, my Jimmy dog, the hard part of, is that he seems to be better so much of the time. He comes and he lays on me and, Give me those eyes and give him more doggy treats. <laughs> and if I'm on the computer too much, this is what he does. Okay. Here's the mouse. If I'm on the computer too much, on there looking around, he'll lay his whole body across the mouse. <laughs> and that's why I can't 
push the buttons. And that's how he tells me I'm spending too much time online and not enough with him. If I'm on, I'm on the phone, if I'm on the phone, it's the same damn thing. He'll come and lay his, his, his body across the phone. I use a speakerphone. So there's, there's life left in him. I don't know. I guess I just wanted to talk about it to somebody. Say hello, baby. Look at eyes. See how crooked his eyes are? See how one way up, way up here? One's way down there? It's because there's a tumor. Hold up right here, baby. Right here. It's changing that whole side of his face. I mean, is that cruel to keep him going? <laughs> ah, don't you bite me, boy. <laughs> Daddy, don't put your fucking eyes, your hand in my eyes then. How about that? <sighs> All right, you guys, how are you guys doing? Remember Pulse today. Pulse, I think this is a two-year anniversary for Pulse. All those beautiful people, those kids, they got killed in uh, Orlando. It's the anniversary. So much wrong with the world. I don't know what to say about this uh, this Trump thing. Lord have mercy. But uh, I kind of got burned out on doing my Trump show because it's, it's so constant. It's every day that dude. <laughs> this is his ultimate dream. A reality show that airs all day, every day. So we'll have to see what goes on with this Kim Jong-un thing. Oh, poor baby. Okay, I'm off to give the baby another dose of Claritin. Claritin is not as strong as Benadryl. So at least with Claritin, he can stay awake. But uh, I don't know. This is very, what's one of the hardest things that I've done? I feel like, damn, I just came through the cancer and... My dog was there the whole time. He's gotten through so many things with me. Mm. I, f I feel guilty that part of me wants to, well, you get a new dog and you get a puppy and you have more years. But it's not that easy. I just can't, I just can't let go of what's going on right now. So, okay, you dog lovers, you understand. You understand where I'm at. And I'm sure many of you have been through the same thing. Some people have had dogs their whole life. They've had three, three and four animals they put down. And I've been to people's houses. They have uh, the hair of the dog still on their mantle. And uh, so you've been through it. But this is my first. This is my first dog I had to put down. I had a dog. My partner and I had a dog in in uh, in uh, L.A. We were in a, I was in my 20s. He was about 30. But he went and got the dog, and so he was a dog lover even at then. So I, I learned to love the dog and all, like that. But uh, but that dog, uh, we left town. We left our apartment in the hands of a friend, and with the condition he would take care of the dog, right? Because we would thought we were moving to New York City. So we packed all our shit up. We moved to New York City. Uh, New York City did not work out for us. I mean, we were very, very naive. Mostly this is me driving this. I had gotten in this car accident. I think I had uh, $6,000, 6000 $7,000. And we went there thinking we were going to get an apartment in New York City and start all over again. Well, we get there and we got lost in the bars. All we did was party, go out every night. And lo and behold, the money ran out. It took about 30 days. We went through all the money. And we had to go there with our tail between our legs and, and beg these apartment buildings people this was a uh, apartment right in uh right at the edge of the village begged them for, to give us our deposit back we had to claim that somebody died in the family and all this kind of stuff i'm sure they understand they've they've been there long enough to know so we we uh we got the deposit back for the little apartment we had right the little apartment with the you know the bathroom it wasn't well it wasn't kind of an apartment it had i know that we had to share a bathroom with two other apartments on that floor. Wasn't a bad looking place, but I mean, it was basically a hotel room. But they gave us the money. We went back to Los Angeles. Now I had shipped all, you see how much shit I collect. I was worse in my 20s. And so we shipped all that stuff to New York City and then had to turn around with, without even getting it out of storage, come back to LA. Fortunately, the, the guy who we left in charge of the apartment, which was a friend of mine, still has the apartment. But he, Ronnie was not, <laughs> I don't know. Ronnie had no experience with dogs. So Ronnie said that he let the dog out. He told the dog to stay in front of the building. Now this dog had never been off leash. Since we had him, he would have no idea about going and playing outside. Maybe Ronnie saw my friend Ronnie. 
He's deceased now as well. Maybe he, he saw something on television. Somebody had a trained dog. They could open the door and let him go. Many people are like that, but this dog was not him. So when we came back, that man had let uh, the dog outside and the dog got hit by a car. So when we came back, the dog was crippled. We took him to the vet and everything, but it was too late. His his little uh, legs were broken. So he, he had severe limp and all that. Our situation had changed because we had now had to vacate this apartment. All three of us had to vacate this apartment now. And so my lover, who's had ex- who's had many dogs, he, uh, I said, "What are we gonna do about Bowie? The dog's name was Bowie. That was a big boy, David Bowie fan back in the day." So uh, he said, "The only thing we could do with, with the dog was we were gonna move him to a new place. We found a new place." Couldn't have a dog there, right? And this dog w- w- was really handicapped at this point. He said he wanted to, going to take the dog to a park and let him go. I said, what? Are you insane? What the hell kind of sense does that make? He said, well, if we take him to the dog pound, they will put him to sleep because he, he, he had the, the problem with his legs. He could barely walk. He said, so the, the, at least if he was in a park, there was a chance at least the dog had a chance that someone would, would find him and take care of him. Didn't make sense to me then, but he knew a lot more about dogs and animals than I did. So that's how we lost our first dog. So I never saw him. I couldn't even go to the park. No, there's no way I would let him just go out in the wild, you know. But uh, he's at a park where a lot of kids were. Perhaps somebody would take him home. That's the only my only experience with, with, with pets, so... He just goes to sleep, right? So hopefully I'll get I'll get the the strength to do this soon. But then I wake up the next day and he's just smiling and ready for his food and doing this stuff. all that stuff. <laughs> okay, baby, say goodbye. Not forever, just to say goodbye. Bye. Bye bye. See you later. Hey, see you later, people. Say it. Look at the camera. Lie lie. Side bye. Look at that poor little eye. Way over here. Like, how can I ignore that? You can't ignore it. I mean, he has a hard time breathing. All right, my baby. Go down. All right, people. I'm just checking in with you. Remember Pulse. Remember what happened. Later. <laughs>